Weed, ganja, Mary Jane. For progressives, Kush is 2019's gay marriage. Public acceptance is increasing and its federal legality seems inevitable. Right now, it's legal in some form in 33 states and part of the platform of nearly all of the 347 presidential candidates who can't wait to pull a reverse Bill Clinton. I did it him. <laughs> it was a long time ago. My introduction to The Chronic was from the burned CDs I hid from my parents and the places rappers talked about, like Compton, California. Nearly 30 years later, weed is now fully legal in California. And what better place to celebrate our progress than with the self-described king of Compton weed, Virgil Grant. So where are we at? Dee's Liquor, uh, city of Compton, my dad's liquor store. We still own it. If you uh, listen to uh, Easy e sipping on the 40, yeah. he gives you directions to this liquor store and uh, tell you what this you can... Is, this is where you get the 40s from. This is where you get the cold 40s from. This is where you can get other things from at the time. You ran Compton? Oh, I ran Compton. When it came to the marijuana? Oh, shit. That Chronic album was inspired by the weed I had in my soul. So you're like, you're an uncredited producer on most of the early Death Row Those records. Those were smoking my weed, Purple Kush. That was my Purple Kush Snoop was smoking on. You're his Purple Kush guy? Man, come on, he know that. Where can I buy legal weed in Compton? Nowhere. What? Nowhere. That's right, in the home of the Chronic, you cannot legally buy the Chronic. Measures to bring regulated marijuana to Compton were rejected at the polls yesterday. Compton's current ban on marijuana businesses will now remain in place. Is that crazy that you can't get legal weed in Compton? It's crazy, ridiculously crazy, because Compton was the place that everybody came to to get weed back in the day. I was gonna say, it's like going to Miami and not getting cocaine, or going to any city in Florida and not getting meth. So it is legal, but most people in Compton don't want weed sold in their community. In fact, most cities in California, 80%, don't want recreational weed sold in their communities. So while my relationship to weed looks like this... Extra, extra, smoke all about it. That might be slightly naive. As communities traumatized by aggressive over-policing and racist sentencing from the war on drugs have a different perspective. You think it's a trap? It is a trap. No doubt about it, it is a trap. Meet Pastor Prince, who helped lead Compton's Vote No campaign. He saw his city destroyed by drugs and doesn't think that legalization will actually benefit the community. Compton has had a reputation for too long being uh, hip-hop, uh, drug-infested, gang warfare. We wanted Compton to have a reputation, a different reputation. There's some critics uh, on the other side of the Vote No campaign. It says, getting on the ground floor of the legalization movement is one way in which to at least get a seat at the table. It's an illusion of inclusion. Illusion of inclusion. Yes. It's like back in high school when people said, oh, you're part of our team, we're cool, and then you realized they had a party last weekend and you weren't invited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got it. Yeah, I've been on the other <laughs> side of that illusion before. It's yeah. painful. Many in the Vote No campaign felt Compton's image was tarnished and their community was destroyed by cannabis. Crack cocaine, PCP, methamphetamine, gang banging. Those were the issues that was prevalent then, and cannabis was, was nothing. Ronald Reagan's war on drugs clearly had an impact on communities like Compton, derailing lives of residents like Virgil, who spent a collective nine years behind bars for dealing. But now that weed is legal, there are millions of dollars up for grabs. And Virgil not only wants in, he feels he's owed it. I want a cannabis shop in every town. Is that a good thing? Oh, that's a great thing. This is an opportunity for us to be in a business that could change people's lives. Not only change lives for yourself, but it could change lives for a community. If it wasn't for the music that comes out of our culture, the Chronic albums, the I Got Five on it, we created this market and started it. And then you're gonna tell us we can't play in it now that it's legal? Virgil was forced to grow his empire outside of Compton. Now he has the less flashy title, King of the County Next to Compton, Weed. These dynamics were a lot to chew on. Luckily, he has something to stimulate my appetite. It is a $450 cigar. It is packed with a lot of cannabis. Uh, it has uh, shatter, wax, sauce, all wrapped in one, slow burn. 
Nice. I have never had a success that would warrant smoking a cigar that big. That's all right. You will one day. OK. While the city of Compton has ended the legalization debate for now, another city in California is trying a different approach. One Bay Area city has a plan to give convicted criminals priority when it comes to providing pot. Like it sounds like they're saying, if you have a record, a drug record, yeah. we want you. Weed is legal in Oakland, but unlike Compton, they want residents affected by the war on drugs to get a piece of the action. They call it the social equity program. And I was going to celebrate American progress by supporting the first store just opened under this new controversial policy. So if I rub that on my brittle feet, I might be high as a kite. For sure. For sure. How much is that? It's owned and operated by the improbably named Alfonso T. Blunt. Blunt. Yes. Literally. Her last name is actually Moore. So do you think if you were born Alfonso T, your analysis? Right. Yeah, I probably no. it wouldn't work. It That's wouldn't, good. We couldn't have your analysis and more. A fourth generation Oaklander, Alfonso got busted for selling weed in 2003 and wound up with five years felony probation. So this is the first store opened under the equity program? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. January 31st, 2018 is when they had the lottery. It was uh, 66 applicants, 36 made it through, and that's how we got into the bingo chamber thing. Throw a bingo ball in the chamber, roll it around. If your ball got picked, you lost. The last four balls won. We won uh, one of the last four, and we are the first one to open out of that. Don't you think you're taking a spot from a Stanford grad who's a hedge fund vice president, and now he can't open his sixth business? His bad. Stanford wasn't grinding on these streets of Oakland and going to jail for selling weed and doing all that. He just seen a, a lucrative company, a lucrative market, and want to jump in. I was convinced and eager to support a hardworking small business owner. It's going to fix my foot, right? I want, like, elephant bones <laughs> at the end of it. <laughs> Drugs. I bought drugs, but I need to fly back to New York. So the big question is, can this fit up my ass? When I look at this, the answer is probably. 